My name is Ken Brooks. I'm the owner of Brooks Super Value, North Main Street in Yall. Uh, it's Christmas 2015 and every year, every Christmas for the last well over 100 years, um, our family have been involved in the grocery business in Yall and primarily down in Hasley Supermarket up until a few years ago when we now moved up to our new supermarket which is called Brooks Super Value. But I'm standing beside a famous old Yall man here called Pasley's Old Man. And Pasley's Old Man was actually a toy that was brought in from Germany around 1870. And um, my family had been involved with Pasley's since 1888. And the idea of the toy was that every year he would have been displayed in the shop window of Pasley's down just above the clock gate across from Merrick's. And in those days, as you can imagine, going back well over 100 years and even going back 50 years, it was a big novelty to see a toy like this because there was moving parts and things. And children were frightened indeed, fascinated, and all the parents would bring them down to look at Pasley's old man as he was got to be known as. And the reason behind him is that um, here in the front you can see there's an elderly gentleman here. Now in latter years my father gave him a small shopping um, basket to bring him back up into the 60s. Uh, but he's just knocking at the front door of a house. He's been out drinking and unfortunately he's a bit under weather so he's shaking a little bit. When he knocks the door, pulls the doorbell here, his wife, who mind you, wouldn't be the most attractive of people, uh, looks rather formidable. She looks out the window, sees him drunk, shakes her head as if no way you're coming in. And uh, so he just repeats it then, he keeps knocking, let me in please. There's a message written up here which was written by, I think probably either W.T. Pasley, who was the original owner of Pasley's, or my grandfather, John Brooks, but it's certainly well over 100 years ago with his little sign. And it says, I never got a drop at Pasley's. And what it meant was that in those days, Pasley's never sold alcohol. So the whole message was, in a funny kind of way, you can't get alcohol at Pasley's. And Pasley's old man was the fellow who was just sort of demonstrating that fact. I'm going to get him to see if I can get him to work in a few moments for you, to give you an idea. In the meantime, this, what looks like a bottle of Guinness, in actual fact, is a Christmas cracker. And we've traced this back to about maybe 1910, somewhere around there. It's, it's very, very old as well. And what happens is that you can just pull out the bottom. And if I can do it now gently without breaking it. And inside, you can see lots of old, very, very old Christmas crackers. Little small ones. And this is just one of them. We've never actually opened one of them to see what's inside that we're afraid. But there was at least seven or eight Christmas crackers inside in it. And indeed, I can see inside there, there's a probably a little party hat as well. So that was just a, a, a little Christmas present from Guinness many years ago. So what I'm going to do now is I'll put this fella back on and put him up on top. And uh, I'm going to, if you, everybody keep their fingers crossed, uh, because sometimes Pazzi's old man gets the flu and he has the flu at the moment. They might not work very well. But you'll probably see him shaking, hopefully, a little bit and herself shaking her head the window. Here we go. She looks out, sees you, what's happening, doesn't like the look, your man is shaking, and that's it. So there you have it. We would wind him up, and he would keep going like this for quite literally hours on end, and every Christmas in particular, I'm the fourth generation, sorry, big brother, third generation in the business. Uh, my father, Jack, for many, many, many years, he was, every Christmas, working away at him, trying to get him working in that. And uh, one Christmas, he couldn't get him working at all. So he put a sign up on top of him saying, sorry, Pazzi's old man is not working, he has the flu. And my father was standing at the front of the supermarket when this uh, English gentleman, who was married to the lady who owns uh, Sir Walter Raleigh's house, Murphy Grove, uh, Mr. Murray, came over to me and said, Mr. Brooks, he said, lovely to see you. I'm glad you're better again. And my father said, what do you mean? I'm glad you're better again. He said, I said, I'm fine. Oh no, he said, I saw a sign. He said, Pazzi's old man had the flu. So there you go. I'm now officially Pazzi's old man. I have a son, Peter, who's taking over the business at the moment. And he just had a son about four weeks ago. And he's going to be called Jack, after my late father, Jack. So, bit of history. It's all going around. So we'll be into the fourth generation with Peter. And we're very happy with that. And again, as I say, it was, this guy has been famous. He's been on the Late Late Toy Show. And he's, he's quite, quite nice. He was made in Germany. And uh, Kay, whose shop we're in here this evening, she's a florist. And this is a lovely old shop. It's this lovely old chandelier here. It's a great history. There was a chap called Leonard Clark here for many, many years. He had a shoe shop here. And very, very well known, very well liked. 
and as I say, so Kay has now taken over this business here for a flower shop and we're absolutely delighted because we're just a few doors up and it's great to see another business opening up in Yall. It's good, it's all very positive. Uh, did you ever send it away to get uh, repaired or, or anything like that and, or, and if it's so when? We haven't really. We've had people who have come to kind of to, to sort of see him and see how he is and have a look at him and all the rest. Um, Kay has found out, uh, has a contact though, who she's made for us, of a German man who's, he's young, he's in his 30s, who comes from the Black Forest region of Germany. And um, that's synonymous with um, clock makers and watchmakers, and particularly clock makers and that. And he has had a look at him and he has said that he would be able to restore him. So our plan is to get him restored and uh, properly working so that he'll be in Kay's window every year because our supermarket is set back a bit off the street. But just, it could be of interest just for people to see. I just turned around here very carefully, the back, and you'll just see the, sorry, the workings of it, which is quite unusual. It's just, it's very, very old. It's very, very old indeed. I hope you can see it there in the camera. And I say that gives you some idea. And these are some of the mighty sort of springs and that. I think everything is very kind of. It's really you can just wind up like that. You see everything moves around. It fits a string and stuff like that holding it together. There's a propeller in the middle here, okay? And uh, there's this wheel, and it's got these little nails inside in it. And um, that's going around, and that activates the little levers and pulleys. Oh, okay. And um, that's what then. And it's all to do with weights and balances and stuff, um, to make sure that she tips out enough or whatever it is. There is a window as well which goes up and down, but that's not working at the moment. It really is. It is a quite quite a collector's item at this stage, and uh, very much part of the family. And as I say, you'll never get a drop to drink the passes. This is a photograph uh, I brought down this evening, and. Um, I don't know if, it, if you can see on the camera there. It's my father down in the old Pasleys, and it's taken over 50 years ago uh, when he would have been maybe in his late 40s. And um, he was there at the baking counter at the time. You can just make out the back of the sides of bacon hanging up there. No refrigeration in those days at all. And he's with his pride and joy, Pasley's old man, looking after him. So it's my duty you now to make sure that Pasley's old man is, survives the next generation and goes from strength to strength in years to come. Looking back, um, times have changed so much and like when I was a child growing up in Yall, like Christmas was a big, big event and um, like we got at Christmas time lemonade, you might get chocolates, fruit, oranges and grapes, you wouldn't get them during the year because everything used to come in uh, on, on, from the railway station outside on horse and cart and an awful lot of things like tea and everything would have been loose sugar, you get in milk loose and everything, and there was no sort of kind of convenience foods or as we would know them today. And it used to be special at Christmas time because that was the one time of the year everybody would try and get a treat and um, and it would be maybe some lemonade or something or some nice bit of turkey or something because people just didn't have the money and it just wasn't there. So even in those days it was a huge attraction. And the extraordinary thing is today children find my own grandchildren are fascinated by him. I think it's the fact that he's, he looks so old and that he's sort of the dress and then the, f the fact that she looks so frightening. They sort of cheer her up. Whoa, that's, 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 amazing. that's amazing. Do you, do you ever have any bit of sympathy for him uh, the, the, when he's going home in an inebriated state with the, with the missus waiting for him? Oh, I do. I mean, like in fairness, probably the reason that he's on the drink is the fact that, as I say, she's a formidable looking woman and maybe he, he needs to kind of strengthen his courage, so to speak, uh, before he faces back in home. And he's probably stayed on a little bit too long because I remember there's a story here, not too far from here, many, many years ago, there was a, a, a local guard and his nickname was Pebbles. And his thing, there was a mart in the town at the time and um, everybody would come in, farmers and that, on horseback or with a horse and cart. And they used to tie up outside onto the poles and Pebbles was looking for something to do. So when he'd know they were inside drinking and that they were drinking too much, he would throw a few, pick up a few pebble stones, throw them at the horses. The horse would get fidgety. He'd go in then and make a complaint. You want to mind your horses? Go on, be off with you. And again, sort of situation, this fella, I'd say, had had too much to drink. He didn't see pebbles in time. And um, he's under pressure, definitely. And I'd say, like, I would not like to be facing home there now this evening if they're there. <laughs> to everybody um, from Yall, as I say, from the North Main Street in Yall, the heart of the retail scene in Yall, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy Christmas 2015 and particularly to those of, 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 of you who won't be home for Christmas, 
in the four corners of the earth because like, we know so many people now who've moved out and they're building new lives in Australia, America, Canada, all over the place. To all of you in particular, and indeed to my own son Simon, who's, I think he's in Scotland uh, this Christmas because he won't be able to make it home. I just wish everybody a very happy Christmas and a peaceful New Year.